Okay, so let's look at this problem in our notes. Uh, it's, it's labeled number five in our notes. Uh, <clears throat> on steady flow devices, it says air at 10 degrees C and 80 kPa enters the diffuser of a jet engine steadily with a velocity of 200 meters per second. Inlet area is 0.4 meters squared. The air leaves the diffuser with a velocity that is very small compared to the inlet velocity. Determine the mass flow rate of air and the temperature of air leaving the diffuser. So this is a diffuser. <clears throat> it's a steady flow device. So there's no changing in time. Um, it's a diffuser. A diffuser will go from a small cross-sectional area, uh, 0.4 meters squared, to a larger one, and the velocity will decrease. So up here at the inlet, we've got you know um, a 200 meters per second velocity uh, at 80 kPa, 10 degrees C, uh, and then at the exit. At the exit, let's see, we have a uh, velocity of, it just says very small. So uh, we can neglect, you know, negligible. All right, so the velocity is very small. Um, and it, it doesn't really tell us much else uh, about it. Uh, but we've got this, it's a diffuser, it's air. Now, we want to know the mass flow rate of air mass flow rate of air. Okay, well, if it's going with this velocity and it's this, I don't know, type of air uh, at this cross-sectional area, uh, is that enough information? What, what do we know? What do we need to know to find the mass flow rate? There's a few equations for mass flow rate, uh, but one of them is that m dot is rho v a, remember that's velocity, uh, or rho is one over little v, specific volume, so or v a over little v, because we know the velocity, 200 meters per second, we know the cross-sectional area, if we could find this, then we've got enough to get m dot. If we could find the specific volume, well, do you think we have enough information to find the specific volume? Huh? I think so. You know, we have a temperature and a pressure. Now, my first instinct was uh, we can get specific volumes sometimes from the property tables in the back of the book. But uh, this is air. Uh, and if we actually look at the air property tables, I think table um, A17, uh, it actually doesn't actually give us specific volume. A17, 18, 19, 20, for all those ideal gases, it doesn't give us specific volume. You can look back at them, it doesn't have it, but they are ideal gases. Uh, how about PV equals RT? If we know the pressure, if we know the R, it's air, so whatever the constant is for R, if we know the T, then we can find um, lowercase v, specific volume, then we can plug it in there, find m dot. All right, so <clears throat> right here, let's go with this one. 80 kPa is the pressure. Specific volume is what we're trying to find. The R, if we go to table A1, uh, I'm in SI units, uh, the gas constant for R, not for air, sorry, is 0.287 uh, either kilojoule or look at that fine print, kPa meters cubed per kilogram K. And the temperature, remember this is just a temperature, uh, it needs to be absolute temperature. Sometimes we, if you have a delta T, then it doesn't matter if you're in Kelvin or Celsius, but here just with temperature, got to be in um, Kelvin. So instead of 10 degrees C, we'll say 283 Kelvin. There we go. We've got specific volume of 1.015 meters cubed per kilogram. Uh, then we can plug that in over here and find m dot. m dot is velocity, 200 meters per second. Um, Cross-sectional area, 0.4 meters squared, divided by specific volume, 1.015 
meters cubed per kilogram, meters, meters, meters cubed, all those meters cancel out, and we're left with kilograms in the denominator, in the denominator, and seconds just in the denominator. We're left with, <clears throat> let's see, I'll pull it right here, m dot, 78.8 kilograms per second. All right, so a lot of, you know, a lot of different equations, different places to find the, the, these numbers uh, in order to get that M dot. All right, second, uh, we need to find the temperature of the air leaving the diffuser. Okay, so we need to find something about some of these outlet, um, out, out, some of the outlet information. So now is where we can go to our um, energy equation. Q, W equals delta H, delta KE, delta PE. This is the equation that I can use for steady flow. Steady flow, single inlet, outlet. Okay, and it didn't say anything about a Q, and for nozzles and diffusers, uh, we can assume that's zero unless we're told otherwise. Work, again, we can assume that's zero unless told otherwise for just for nozzles and diffusers. You know, it's just going through a, a, a change in, in cross-sectional area. Um, I think delta H is very important for all. I think all these city flow devices, delta H is important. Delta KE, we, we were told uh, some velocities, so that, that's important. Uh, we weren't told any um, change in heights. So, so I think this is kind of our, our main equation, that zero would be H2 minus H1, right? The outlet minus the inlet, <clears throat> plus... V2 squared minus V1 squared, uh, both of those over 2. And so it kind of insinuated that, that this is pretty small, or sorry, sorry, it insinuated that the outlet velocity was small enough uh, that it could be neglected. And especially when you are squaring this one and squaring this one, uh, then, you know, a number that's much larger is is even even much larger than the smaller number um so there we uh we have this v1 you know 200 meters per second squared uh maybe we kind of have h1 i think we could find h1 for air uh if, if we look at table a17 it does have Let's look at table A17. Yes, it does have enthalpy. And those uh, tables are really just um, reliant on temperature. So from table A17 for the enthalpy at 283 Kelvin, go ahead and kind of pause and do this yourself and see if you can calculate that. Uh, go back and look at that property table going to have to interpolate, going to have to interpolate, so see if you can find H real quick, I'm adding a page here, alright, so this is what I've got, I've got an H value of 283.14 kilojoules per kilogram, alright, so here's my equation, 0 equals H2 minus 283.14 kilojoules per kilogram, uh, plus, uh, let's be careful, 0 minus 200, let's see, meters per second squared over 2, but this would just be joules per kilogram, this would just be joules per kilogram. Let me divide it by a thousand to get it into the same units, kilojoules per kilogram. All right, and so then I can just solve for H. I would get H is 
0.14 kilojoules per kilogram. And so again, table A17 for air, it has H values at different temperatures. H values at different temperatures. And so I could interpolate that 303.14 lies somewhere between 300.19 and 305.22. Uh, interpolate that to get, see if you can do that. I've got a temperature of 303 Kelvin. I'll probably leave it there. You could change that to Celsius. Uh, but that would be your final temperature. You got that. Let's kind of take a, take a um, step back, look at the big picture here. You got that from finding H2. You got H2 from the energy, um, conservation of energy um, equation for a nozzle where a lot of these other things dropped out, canceled out. There was no heat transfer. There was no work. Uh, there was no change in potential energy. So got that final H2 and then went back to the table interpolated to get temperature T2.